That's a new look for you. Are you the key master? No. Are you the Red Cup Review? Yes! Rob Banks, Red Cup Review, what's going on everybody? Blitzway figures are here, we've been waiting for two years for these damn things. Let's open them up. Bam, whoa, I didn't expect them to be that nice. Check this out. The boxes actually have patches on the boxes themselves. The Ghostbusters patches. Look at that, it's limited edition. I don't even know how the hell I'm going to get these bad boys out, so when we come back, we'll have them out. These figures come with an absolute metric ton of accessories, so we're going to try and blow through it. Okay, the police barricade line uh, comes from the exclusive set. Slides out. It comes in three different parts, or four different parts, rather. It slides in there, slides in on this side. The two pieces clip in the middle, and you get your police barricade, uh, police, New York City police barricade. Blitzway, time for you to give us this figure. Because that's the one we all want. All right, great. Let's get on with the rest of the accessories. Because this nifty little sticker, all four figures come with this. It is a sticker. Hey, you don't think it's too subtle, do you? They come with the New York magazines, the Globe, the covers of the Time, what looks like the cover of the Ghostbusters album, except that's another sticker, as you can see on the back. The paper grade on these is actually perfect newspaper grade, and you could actually read the paper too. That's how much detail is in them which is really cool, but that's where the fail comes in. They should have made it thicker and more of a newspaper and not just actual cutouts. But they are really detailed and they are nice and it adds a nice little touch as just a little bit of an extra. The Ghost Trap. I believe just Egon and, not Egon, Winston and Ray come with the Ghost Trap. Ghost Trap pops open. Yay, nice little spring accessory. Close it. Grab it here and pop it up and slide the trap out, which is a nice added bonus. They did not spare any expense when it comes to the detailing in these things. It even has paint rub. You could even read the words that, you know, like on all the figures, anytime that there's a little bit of uh, di um, uh, print, you can read all the print on each of the accessories. And there's a little bit of wear on there. This does not depress down. The light does not go on, but it doesn't matter. Be careful with this. This is a spring. If you pull it too far, it will snap. So be extra careful with that. Slimer! With the exclusive pack and the Doctor 3 pack, comes with a nice translucent base of the No Ghost. Three parts, the base, the stand, and then the ugly little spud. The arms come like this, you pop them on, they articulate and rotate all around, in and out. And he's got a real gelatin feel to him. He's actually hard plastic, but he's got a real slimy feel. So when you run your fingers over him, it gives you that, that sense of like, like, oh, this guy's like kind of like nasty feeling a little bit, but... It adds to it. There's a nice amount of dark paint around the eyes and the face. So when you put an LED up to it, he's really translucent, but it still keeps the detail in the face sculpt as well. And he's got a lot of nice uh, little bit of detail on his nails. They added a, a nice little bit of paint around the nails area as well. The exclusive pack also comes with this, the no-go sign, which lights up. Don't have the batteries in it, so you ain't going to see it. But I'm sure you've seen it in all the other videos. It only really lights up around the edges too. So they kind of dropped the ball when it came to the light up feature with this, but it's still a really nice piece. It's thick, it's got a little bit of weight to it. It's got a nice little metal chain, so you can hang it. Or just kind of, it's really not gonna stand up straight if you place it down, but if you get creative with it, I'm sure you could put it together and make use of it in your display. All right, check them out, the Proton Packs. Everything here is a real wire. These, let me see these black wires here, here, and here. They are metal springs, so be very careful. This stuff will break easily, even though it is quite sturdy. It lights up. There's a button on the bottom here. We'll get to that in a minute. The way, the amount of detail on here is incredible. I mean, you could actually read the words and the warning labels on everything. Here's the neutrino wand. The tip of this lights up. We'll show you that in a second. You got the little warning label and your buttons on the side. Hand grips. The way it plugs in, you got this little clip here, this little clip there, 
spin it around and it clips right in by just pressing it on and it stays on pretty sturdy and nice unplug that spin it around you got your straps you got your little bungee cords your little back padding the way to get the batteries in this you just pull here and it slide that you don't want to pull the whole thing off you just pull it to unplug this little tab here spin it here you have your batteries they are the flat batteries that are 2032s they go in there you screw it back in make sure it's nice and tight on there because It'll seem like you have a shortage in the battery that the buttons and the electronics are not working, but they work just fine. Make sure once you screw it back in, you clip this back on, because what this does is it gives extra pressure onto the battery compartment in order to lock it in. All right, let's get to the light-up effects. Well, I guess we're gonna have to take control. Gotta, gotta take control. Got it, yeah, take control. Yeah, look at that. Egon's backpack all lit up. Ooh, that's too hot to handle. <laughs> Here they go. Where the light up effect. Uh, I'm probably never going to light this up besides to show a few friends and to show you guys. Not a fan of electronics on any of my six scale figures, but these are extremely nice and well done. And they're very bright as far as the neutrino wand goes. Here it is. You can tell that it's, there you go. See, it doesn't really look like it's that lit up there, but when you look at it, it is bright as heck. And on here, you have a little metal clip kind of thing. Let's see if you can get a nice close-up on that. Yeah, you see that nice little metal clip there? On every neutrino wand, there's a little indentation piece right here and a metal little metal peg. You peg it in, it slides right in. And it doesn't light the whole wand up, it just lights up the front piece here. You'd have to get a crazy, crazy sick, probably LED strip running through this whole thing to light the whole thing up. They didn't do that. It's not such a big deal, but it does work, and I'm sure it would work great in a dark, dark room. Okay, so it slips in there, and it pops off. It doesn't pop off too easy, but it doesn't, um, it slides out pretty well, though. All right, there we go. Thanks for the, uh, demonstration there, Egon. Attached to the actual proton blasters themselves, but they start off purple, the strands go around, you get a nice little blue effect, starting off red, going orange, going yellow for the actual stream itself, and each individual stream has different variations of when the colors kind of change, so they're not all exactly the same, or at least mine aren't exactly the same, so that was really cool, so it gives a nice little unique feel to them, and they are pretty big, they're about, I don't want to say 10 to 12 inches long, so let's get into the figures! First up is our resident slacker, slacker, Dr. Peter Venkman, who is a sloppy, sloppy scientist. But he's not a sloppy figure, although down here you can see that they actually had the detail enough to keep his pants untucked, and he is the only Ghostbuster that does not tuck in his pants to his boots. The stands, although really nice and unobtrusive, they are a damn nightmare. This is where Blitzaway completely dropped the ball. They come in multiple different parts. These things in the back here are all different separate pieces, and it's like crazy to put together and it's very very uh loose and they're trying to i guess reinvent the wheel with these things but they really shouldn't have so bad bad stands but good good head sculpt on peter venkman all the figures are pretty much the same with the exception of their packs i mean their uh their patches all the packs are the same rather uh peter and one of the other ghostbusters comes with uh the gloves as a like a little separate accessory you can kind of slip on there when he's ungloved all the Ghostbusters also have removable, come on you little sucker, walkie-talkies. Come in, Ray. He's staring at me. Let's stare at his head sculpt. Peter is probably the weakest of all of the head sculpts themselves. It's still Bill Murray. Uh, you could tell it's him. The detail in his hair is excellent, but it, they kind of lost something when it went from prototype stage to finished product in like, you know, um... Uh, Peter is you you know he has like pock marks in his face and they kind of like get lost uh, in the detailing there but the the hair parts are really good and he's got a nice little furrow in his eyebrow and oh here's another thing that the suits do they all not that you're gonna be unzipping them but they do zip up and zip down and we'll get into that on one of the other figures the mechanic of the Ghostbusters and probably the second best in my opinion head sculpt of the bunch Mr. Ray stands Dan Aykroyd. He looks very, very excellent. They did a great job with him. 
A lot of really good work on the hair. A lot of detail in his hair. And check this out. He comes with his goggles, and the go ecto goggles are really nice. They're actually got the holes for them to see through. Like I said, Blitzway spared no expense on this bad boy. Check him out. That's Dan Aykroyd if I haven't seen him. He's got that look on his face like, huh? What? I just mortgaged my house ten times over so that Peter can get rich. But we're all going to end up broke anyway. <laughs> all right. Let's take a look at the next one. The brains behind the Ghostbusters, ladies and gentlemen. I give you Mr. Harold Ramis, a.k.a. Egon Spengler who, in my opinion, is the best of all four Ghostbusters in their head sculpts. The glasses are separate. They come off. He's got crazy amount of detail in his hair. They got his nose right. A lot of people were complaining about his expression being kind of weird in those first photos. It's not. He's got that inquisical look like, what the hell did I just see on my PKE meter? Or I believe this might be the Gaga meter, which also has a little bit of writing and words on there that he comes with this accessory as well. The PKE meter, they go down, they also pop back up. Let's take it out of his hands and give you a look of what it looks like. They go down and come up pretty easily. Just like that. Very nice. And Egon is the man. I believe how Remus also helped write the story as well. Let's take these glasses off and give you an idea of what he looks like without his glasses on. And that's him, Mr. Harold Ramis. May he rest in peace. So we're going to move it along to our final Ghostbuster now. You want to get some coffee? I don't know. Do I want some coffee? I don't know. Should I have some? Yes, have some. If there's a steady paycheck in it, he will believe anything you say. Winston Zedmore, my man. Coming in about halfway through the movie, Winston is in my opinion, one of the definitive Ghostbusters. He is the working man's Ghostbuster. When I was younger, this fella kind of went under the radar, and like everyone else, my favorite Ghostbuster was Peter Venkman, until I hit the age of reason and realized how much of an <laughs> Peter Venkman is, and how true and hardworking and much more I identify with Winston. A lot of people were complaining about his skin color. Uh, first of all, I don't know if the initial prototypes were bad or it was a bad batch or something but the skin tone on my Winston is pretty excellent he does not look red he does not look shiny and glossy you gotta stop taking photos of these figures with light directly on their faces fellas uh, I'm no photographer but I know not to do that but my guy came out pretty good anyway so the sculpt is really good on him I would say he's the third best sculpt of them all I am not going to get mine repainted I am pretty happy with the way it came out Winston comes with a cigarette you got a nice look at the cigarette there and actually has a little bit of a burnt tip. Winston, uh, Peter, and Ray all come with cigarettes. They come with a regular cigarette, unburnt, and one that's kind of like lit at the top there. So that's a nice amount of detail. Let's take a look at the rest of this figure. We're going to use Winston as our model for all their suits are the same, basically. So they got their patches. Their zippers go up and down. They got their nice little watches. They all come with pretty much the same stuff. The elbow pads, they stay on nice. Nothing is loose on these figures, but a lot of things can and will break if you are not careful. Oh, the walkie-talkies come in and out. They got their nice little clips on their belt that are metal, which are nice, and they hang freely. They got their little hoses that connect through the back here. I don't know what this thing is, but it's just the amount of detail on here is crazy. You got like little computer chips and micro boards and these wires are all springs so be very careful when dealing with them they all got their patches and the work on the boots let's get a close-up on his boots the work on the boots is really well done it's got a nice little bit of weathering on it crumpling and crimpling in certain areas they look worn they look used and the Ghostbusters outfits themselves each one has a different amount of weathering on the actual suit as well so they look like they've been worn they look like they've been used Winston I don't know if you could see it actually has like a dirt stain over here and they've been fighting they've been busting ghosts as far as the articulation goes it's the standard Hot Toys body or Blitzway body you know the 
be careful with the wrist pegs, although the wrist pegs on these figures are actually pr a lot more sturdy than they are on the regular Hot Toy figures. Yes, we know this is Blitzway. The wrist, wrist pegs on these are much, much, much better than your usual Hot Toy figure, but still take care with that. Take care of these figures. They're great. This set is the piece de la resistance of your collection if you happen to order it. Ray, Peter, Winston, uh, my man Egon, the late and great Harold Ramis. This set is excellent. For those of you who didn't pre-order it and can't find it, you better go out there and figure out how you're going to get your hands on these things because when that Ecto-1 drops, you guys are going to be killing each other for it or just probably having to buy a second house or even mortgage the one you're in just to afford the damn thing. But they are worth it. As you can see, uh, there's really not that much bad you could say about them. We are giving this set five cups. I can't say enough good about it. Although there are a few hiccups along the road, it was not enough to knock these bad boys down to the four, four and a half mark. Blitzway has really, really stepped up their game for this. It's a shame Hot Toys didn't jump on it at first. So that's the review. Shout outs to geekstronomy.com. Check out the lair, laironline.net. Check out Heist Click, the music by them. You catch them on Amazon. I'm Rob Banks wanting to say subscribe. You guys got to subscribe to the page. And leave a comment. Let's start a community. I want to thank you guys for watching the last few videos I've been doing. So comment, like us, like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, official Red Cup review. Rob Banks saying, if somebody asks you if Blitzway makes good action figures, you say yes!